Today I'm going to go over uh, Owl Barrel Rodeo and just a few quick tips to get started for the beginner DM. Uh, I plan on using this in my next campaign. It, it's simple, easy to use, uh, and it's something I can use on the fly. Uh, so it's at owlbear.rodeo. I got a nice little owlbear on the front. Uh, it's very intuitive, I think, as you go through. You can start a game, you can join a game. They have a Patreon, you can donate, uh, Reddit, Twi Twitter, YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to start a game. You can put it in password in case you want people to not join your game. Um, for this one, I'm just going to do a password of A, and you can do no password. So once you start it, it creates a unique URL. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some of the interactivity. Um, as imagine, you know, I'm going to simulate two people playing. I got myself, Wodang, who I have the DM control, and then little Nikki is the player, and he's in the other browser. Uh, yeah, so one of the things you can see is that the dice update. So, oh, I rolled a 20. It's taking a little bit to update, but there it is. We can move the tokens. So this is the player character. He wants to move. He can move that on his screen. I'm moving it on mine, but uh, he can move his character tokens, I can move his ter character tokens. Um, and you see right now he has the ability to click on it as well. So I'm just going to name him to Floridus and then on the DM side I'm going to I'm going to lock it. So when I lock it, he can't move it, which isn't a good thing. So if I want to keep something still without players being able to move it, you know, you want to lock it down. So as a DM, I can move the monster tokens. Boom. You know, you're going to see all this happening. And the nice thing is, as a player, they can, if they want to point at something, they can say, oh, I actually want to attack these guys over here. Boom, I see it on my screen. And he's using this laser pointer. Screen, you see, I have the what, what's actually going on on the player's screen. They just see the fog of war. So if I add in the fog of war again, and let me just, I'll just do everything. You can see it added it in, and that's what this cutting does. That's what kind of just like cuts it out, so you can kind of explore stuff. And that was a weird one. I just cut, 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 cut. I think I may have too many too many cuts I'm undoing my cuts but you can also delete whatever you've done um, but obviously it does it in bulk uh, yeah so if we just have fog of war around those guys fog of war around those guys boom boom you know quick interactivity there players can see it and then same thing with this note if I hide it it doesn't show up boom I, I can unhide it Hello, my old friend, and that's what the player sees. And then the drawing tools. Uh, so we're just going to draw. Uh, just draw, you know, some lines coming out of here. As a, that wasn't a very good one, but you know, a little area going away from the little lake there. And, you know, it shows up on the map. Um, so this is a great tool. You know, on the fly, you can prep beforehand. Um, there's no option right now that I'm aware of where you can create multiple maps um, and, you know, and have them all prep. You kind of have to prep them as you go. Um, but that's kind of good for random encounters, you know, and you just want to, you're not really yet into the theater of mind play. You just need the tokens. You just throw all the tokens in. Um, I mean, there's quite a few here. You can also, like I said, add the, the tokens that you want if you want to be more specific. Um, but, I mean, there's a good set here just for beginners if you don't want to put a lot of work in. Um, you know, great for one-shots if you're new or, you know, even if you're veterans and you just want to one-shot and you don't want to do a lot of prep, here you go. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely one of the new tools that I will be using in my upcoming campaign. Um, yeah, so let me know if there's any other tools that you like to use uh, that's useful for, you know, beginner DMs or uh, anyone who doesn't quite have a lot of time to prep. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.
add party members. Uh, so at the start screen, they just put in this code, or they just use the URL, which we might as well just skip a step and use the URL. Uh, right now we have, you can change your party name or your nickname that shows up on this party screen here. I've already got it changed to Wodang, but I can change it to, uh, I think Copper Dragon was the default last time, so I'm going to change it to Copper Dragon, and you should see my name changes up here. And all that really does uh, is for the dice tray, uh, this little tray window here, you can choose your dice. You just roll your dice, and then it pops up in the party window for everyone to see. Uh, and so there's all these dice that you just keep rolling, uh, and you just basically clear the dice. If you want to roll new ones, we're going to roll 4d6. This is your damage. And then there's a reroll button. And you can keep rerolling, and you should see it up here. So if we were creating characters, 9, 18, 18, 13, 13, and I think I lost count from when I counting in 12. So, and then you can expand, make it bigger, and then there's a button to show your results in the party window, or you can hide them, and then it won't, sh it shouldn't show them in the party window. So I'm going to close that. Uh, there's some other options here. I'm going to change this back to whoa, dang. Uh, share audio, I haven't really used that, don't really plan on it. There's a little timer, it sets a little timer at the bottom of the window, and you can set it for however long you want, and then it starts, you see this little timer showing up down here. So, you got five seconds to make a decision, and then you don't have to count, they can do it. Uh, so settings, light theme, just changes. Not sure what this does. Uh, fog capacity, probably just lightens or darkens the fog that we're about to see. I know I need to raise this up. It's hard to see the token labels. Um, grid snapping sensitivity, I just did. I just left it there. I haven't messed with it. Um, you can clear your browser cache, or you can erase everything that you've done, or you can import and export whatever data you, you've saved in here in case you moved to another browser or something. Um, really, the only thing I would adjust is this token label size. Um, sometimes it's hard to see it. So getting to the exciting part, on the right-hand side here, you see all these tokens. These are all preset tokens. And they have some preset maps. Uh, so we have some different maps here that we can use. Uh, we'll do grass. You can edit it, but for simplicity, you just go in. Boom, you got a grid. Uh, if you have a party, you know, just on the fly, you can kind of assign each one, one of these tokens, and we can assign some of the bad guys, um, so if, you know, you kind of have to keep track of who they are, but there's some ways around it, and let's just say a goblin army came up, uh, so one thing you could do, this is, um, one of the players, you just name them, you click on them, you can change the size, you can rotate uh, this label, you can name them, or you can, you know, give them class names, uh, or, you know, race, let's say this is a Goliath. Um, there we go, fit it to the five feet. And label, we can do, say that's my character. Well, dang, I guess the more words you have in there, the smaller it goes. And there's a bunch of other uh, features here on the tokens. Um, so you can highlight the outside, and you can click all of them, and then you just kind of get these crazy colors going on them. Um, so these could be used for statuses, or just to differentiate you know, the tokens from each other. You can hide the token, so if I hide it, the other players can't see it. It's useful for, you know, monsters if you want to get them on. Uh, you can lock the token so nobody can click on it. And then, I guess you can change the type. I'm not sure what this character stuff does, um, but I don't think I need to use it. 
Um, so, like, Goblin 1, I could spell Goblin 1, Goblin 2, Goblin 3, Goblin 1. Um, and if you want to, you know, or you can just say, oh, he took 10 damage. He took 25 damage. He took 30 damage. You know, I think that kills him, but uh, and then you take more damage. Oh, you took 7 damage. Boom. And you can kind of keep track if that's... I don't know if I'll use that or not. I don't know how intense the new combats are going to be, but um, very useful if I want to keep track of battle. Um, so those are tokens. The other nice thing about tokens is that you can add tokens in the bottom right. There is a edit tokens. And so it brings in all the tokens that are available. And you can probably edit monk, name, character, default size, default label. I don't really plan on changing those, but you can. You can search. So if I go barbarian, so barbarian, I guess it tries to find some words that sound the same. Uh, so the other thing I can do is you can upload tokens, and I should have just uploaded one from the campaign. You can edit, and I guess this is from the two minute tools. Which I think I had a hand in this tool, if I'm not mistaken, but this is the character Floridus. He's a tiefling sorcerer, and you click done. And then whatever you import pops up here. Uh, if you erase your cache in the settings or uh, erase all content and reset, you basically wipe out anything that you saved here. Um, but I can bring him, him in, and you can see I can get him five feet. And if you, you know, if he's dead, boom, knock him out, turn him 90 degrees. Uh, he's got a spell on him, or you just want to differentiate him from other tokens. You can, he's already differentiated, but a lot of things you can do, and super quickly. So then there's some other settings here. Uh, so we have a select tool. I think this is mainly for whoever is running the maps. You can just select everything. And then when you select everything, uh, different ways you can select. You can lasso, which is just draw, boom, got everything. You know, it's easy to select them. I thought there was a copy tool over here. Yep, you can just do Control C, Control V, and then boom, you copied, even though you wouldn't want to copy the party. Um, it's probably more useful for these guys over here. You just go boom. Yeah, however many you want to do. Say there's a whole army coming, all in neat lines, ready to get blown up. Right, so boom, all done. If you don't need them, there's a little, when you click and drag, a little trash can pops up, just drop them in the trash can. Um, boom. So the other thing is fog. Um, you can draw uh, fog, so there's a couple different ways. This is just conforming to the grid. You can draw a box. So if I want to draw a box over these guys, or if you just want to, you know, even though you can, you can free draw it, and then boom, you got fog. So you can toggle the fog on and off. You can erase the fog, so I don't need that one. You can disable fog cutting. Enable multi-layer. I don't. I may need to use that. I don't know. Make it a little bit more complex. But the thing about you can enable your fog preview. So this is what the players would see. So I mean, obviously there's something there. Um, maybe if you did something like. Let me get rid of some of this other fog. And let me just draw like you know. You kind of have the whole map. 
there's no fog to cut. I guess I'm in the fog cutter, not the boom boom. We're gonna cut that, and you know you kind of oh, that's what it. Yeah, you can cover this whole area, right? So now, oh, we don't know what we see, and the players want to you know explore over here. If you're really in depth, you can cut the fog. So the, yeah, so you just go like boom. So now what they see is that area that you uncut. So as they explore, and I say, you know, he keeps going, oh, I go this way, what do I see? Well, I can show you. Boom. And then they'll be like, oh, goblins. OK. The other thing you can do is you can draw. So you can select your colors, whatever colors you want. Once again, the paintbrush, I think, is, um, yeah, this is freehand this is like a free form and kind of fill in so if we got like a lake over here you can fill it in and you can see the the more times I click in an area it should do a couple layers and it kind of gets darker as you so obviously not the best you can do line to line straight lines this is more a freehand line shapes you can delete and you just gotta click on them and each one of those things that I did was a its own item you can erase all which I just did uh, you can disable blending it's probably a little bit more disable shape fill if you want to get fancy uh, there's a measure tool so once again up oh, 20 feet only thing I, I don't think this shows on the player screen um, so if you want to do a radius, say, oh, I want a 25 radius. Well, I hit anyone, you you know, if it's not easy to see. It's like, oh, you'll hit yourself. And you kind of just keep going. Uh, you got your 25 foot radius and you can measure, you know, can I get there? 40 feet, barbarian can't get to you. Um, this is a laser pointer. So wherever you point, you'll see on your screen. And they'll see on the screen, so you're like, oh, when the players are playing, they can point at this guy and say, I want to attack this goblin, even though, you know, there may be a thing, but it just kind of helps see. And then we have notes. So on this one, you can create a note. Um, hello, my old friend. You can change the background. You can hide it so that only you can see it, you can lock it so that only you can move it. Uh, I did not mean to place a new note. I don't even think I can... Yeah, I can't. When you lock it, it doesn't move. When you unlock it, there you go. And then there's a text mode. So it basically just gets rid of the thing so you can make signs or something or... text bubbles, who knows. So that's pretty...